here at Oak Stop, shooting in the conference room here. Uh, we've turned it into a little bit of a studio, and we're here with the co-founder and uh, manager, director of the Oak Stop, Trevor Parham. Um, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and thank you for um, letting me be a member and being a part of this space. Um, tell us a little bit about, um, you know, what what started this place, what was your motivation behind it, and um, maybe a couple couple plans for the future, visions. Sure, sure. Um, I think the thing that really started a lot of this vision was just several experiences working as a creative in this day and age where, you know, frankly, a lot of us need uh, physical brick and mortar space. We have the internet now. Right. And that's where a lot of people actually sort of start their enterprises. Their, not their careers, but if they're going to start an endeavor or a business, it often starts with the internet or some digital format in general. Um, and it's just what we've gotten used to. We get websites, we get email addresses, uh, we produce content and we put it on other, you know, other mediums, Facebook, YouTube, what, what have you. But there's a, there's a gap in terms of our ability to fully generate the type of revenue, resources, income that we need when we don't have physical space that people can access in the street. So um, about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, I started representing fine artists, and it was the same sort of thing where I first built a website, built an online store, and still realized that the best way to get people to buy artwork is just to have it out physically. And instead of doing it in the street, you know, on the corner or whatever, where sometimes you might need a permit or it might not always be the best conditions, of course, the next best step is to be inside some space. So. After taking some of these artists to various places for First Friday, Friday's vending, um, one of the spaces actually was a retail space that was owned by a property investment company. And I basically pitched that property investment company on the notion of turning that abandoned retail space into sort of a mixed-use arts and enterprise space uh, where artists can not only sort of display work in a gallery fashion but also sell work as they did on First Fridays, but then beyond that, realizing that art typically doesn't um, sustain itself on its own in terms of you know sales and what have you. So figuring out what other sort of functions could exist in that same space. So thinking about boutique retail for other artisans who need to sell stuff in physical space, um, but then also doing some kind of function that would create traffic through the space. So I thought maybe we could do a bit of a, you know, internet cafe, kind of, you know, free Wi-Fi if you sit and pay whatever, you know, sort of admission price. And then having the uh, creative services and production background I have, I figured, well, we could also use this as a space to uh, shoot videos and um, basically facilitate and advise, consult with people on their Kickstarter and crowdfunding campaigns um, in this space, both letting them demonstrate their product in the space, but then also filming them and uh, helping them produce that video. You know, where is the space where people can both paint and produce videos and design websites and, and you know, do drafting tables and things like that? Mixed use. Mixed use, yeah. yeah. So um, they they actually encouraged me to pursue that concept of doing co-working for creatives. And I figured it would be great to do something like that in Oakland. And so fast forward a few more months, um, I'm doing commercial real estate development with a firm here in Oakland and started to get a sense of what this area in downtown Oakland is all about in terms of its, uh, its projected growth for the next few years in terms of uh, the real estate market and in terms of um, just all the other businesses that are now migrating into Oakland. And through doing some of that, I ended up, uh, outside of that development project, ended up meeting the developer of another building um, in downtown right by the 19th Street BART station and was able to talk to him about what he was dealing with, which is basically having an abandoned uh, commercial space that he couldn't sell at the rate that you know they would prefer and we kept talking and I basically said look you know if you want to have an office function in this building I think I could bring something in here that would actually create some traction in terms of the the income you want in your building but then also it could create some some community benefits some social impact um, here in the community and, and and sort of some cultural value by bringing in creatives who are doing business so we are using office space, but we're also you know, having a creative space. So in a lot of ways, that was sort of what then kicked it off to start Oak Stop. He said, okay, great, um, I'll give you a shot at doing that. I'd like to see what you can do. Um, we made a deal, you know, there was certainly resources involved in terms of starting that deal, 
but um, he said, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do this where normally some people might not get that opportunity, essentially. So from there, I figured, great, we got this space. It's right in the middle of downtown Oakland. Um, we're supporting artists, and we're also integrating all these different sort of threads into this one quilt. And I thought it's going to be a destination for people who are already in this area and already sort of passing by, and it's a place that as they're on the go, they'll stop. And it was you know, pretty simple, but I thought, okay, Oak Stop. Oak Stop. It works. It, it works. just has a nice ring to it, yeah. Yeah, so it's a one-stop shop. It's, um, it's a pit stop. It's a backstop, a support for, for local people doing creative uh, enterprise here in Oakland. It's, it's something every day here, and I'm just fortunate enough to sort of actually meet almost everybody. You know, most people that join the space... Uh, typically come through me, you know, and so it's it's amazing just to feel like I know all these people. Yeah, it must be a great opportunity, and and I'm again very very grateful to be a part of it. So thanks again. And um, <clears throat> another musician that I've started to work with, Miko Tolliver. I want to give her a shout out just because we're practicing. She's she's getting ready to do a little uh, West Coast tour, so that's another artist to to look out for. And you know, just come by because you know you never know who you could meet or what sort of artist or. Some someone that has an idea that you might be able to help out with or vice versa. So um, it's just a really great place to collaborate and to share ideas. And uh, once again, we thank you for the opportunity to be here. And uh, thanks again for coming on the show and, and sharing your vision and, and sharing your opinions. Thank you, Sam. Cool. Well, we'll be right back. You're watching I'm Not a Professional, But Wait I Am with your host, Sam DJ Lumbajack. Thanks again, Trevor. Thank you.